Across Yorkshire's moors and dales, the world's most famous vet set the benchmark for animal care. And James Herriot's legacy lives on. His former trainee, Peter Wright, oh, champion. has been a Yorkshire vet for over 40 years. James Herriot used to take me out feeding cows. We used to get finished and pop in and have a cup of tea. Lovely. Peter's old partner, Julian Norton, Are you all right with your big ears and your big attitude? Now runs two practices. Eking out the last few drops of goodness. One of them in the North Yorkshire town where Harriet lived and worked. There we go. We're going to have some fun. And in the foothills of the Pennines... Give it a welly hat's it. ..a new generation of town and country vets... <laughs> Catch, Dave. ..also uphold the Harriet ethos. You get some of that, lad. What a champion, eh? Come on, vets. The teams are united. It's brilliant, isn't it? It is. How much left, guys? It's just over this next hill. ..by one common goal. Oh, it's massive. ..to help animals of all shapes... Why are you so bad at catching monkeys? ..sizes... Blimey! ..types... Oh, fuck! <laughs> ..and temperaments. Ah. Oh, you beggar! It's definitely not glamorous. Sort of like popping a spot. But it's varied. You going for a ride, lady? It's really easy. <laughs> Piggly, come on. <laughs> no, 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 no. But they continue the Harriet tradition. They're bonnie these Lester lambs, aren't they? Treating all creatures... <laughs> ..great... <laughs> We've got pals. Come on, there's your mum there. ..and small. The hens come to see me, which is very friendly. The clouds above Yorkshire set the tone for each day's ambition. Wisps signal a day of whimsy. A chance to leave hats and coats at home. There are clouds of indecision, as skies full of possibilities come and go. And while some wander lonely, when sinister clouds come together, the only sensible choice for both man and beast is to seek a safer kind of shelter. In Huddersfield today, the sun is shining through pleasant puffs of cotton wool. But Matt's heading to a local dairy farm... Come on, look. ..where a dark cloud is hanging over one of James Hill's girls. Steady, lass, steady. <clears throat> We've got a cow, two claws of a hoof. One of them's really badly infected. <clears throat> We've tried our best to try and get it to heal. But for the last week, I've been watering the field and she's been getting worse and worse. So, hopefully, Matt can come and try and relieve that pain. Come on. Come on, old love. Come on. Come on. You know where you're going. Come on. Good girl. Morning, James. You all right? All right, Matt. Not so bad, thank you. Problem with the foot, I understand. Yeah, she's got a, a split claw on her front foot. Yeah. Um, we've been blocking her up, so she's not been putting any weight on it. Hello. <laughs> oh, we're making friends already. <laughs> you know. oh, she's I friendly, know. isn't she? Yeah, she's all right. Hi. I'd probably call her a gentle giant. Really nice temperament to her. Yeah. So I just want to keep her going a bit longer if we can. Crikey, I can see it from here. It looks nasty already, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's starting to actually... Split out that Split top. out a little bit. Mm. I'm a bit concerned about... Well, very concerned, to be fair. Jeez, yeah. It's very visible now that she is in quite a lot of pain with it. Every time I go out of the house, we can just see her slowly hobbling past to get to the water trough, and uh, it's not a very nice sight. Oh, ah, yeah, nasty as that, isn't it? Ooh. So you can see where this blood is here, and that's where all the damage is all around this line of the hoof, and you can see at the tip of the toe where the normal structure that should be like a nice, solid, level playing field is just massively disrupted, and that would be really, really painful for her. This orange shoe is uh, called a block, and what that does is that lifts the weight and the pressure off of this really bad claw, and it gives the body time to heal. However, the body's just not healing at all. There are loads of causes for foot problems, it, something simple as a stone getting in there and causing 
disruption for a long period of time or even just an infection that's got carried away and just destroyed all that normal tissue. But unfortunately, it gets to a stage where the body just can't heal itself, even with the help that we give it, and you're just left with no other option but to amputate it. You don't ever do it unless you really, really have to, but ultimately, when the structure of the foot's just ruined, you're just not getting That's anywhere right. with it. Right, let's get it numbed up and ready. All right. It's all right, you'll feel better after this. Good girl. You are really working against the clock because as much as you've got everything nicely restrained, if she really wants to move that foot, she's going to move it. About here, I think. We're going through the skin, we're going through vessels, and we're eventually going through bone, and it'll be something that we've got to make sure I get nice and deep with my local anaesthetic there. Mm. Oh, I know, I know, I know. So we're just cleaning it, as I'm cleaning it, I'm working all that local anaesthetic in so it makes sure she can't feel out. She's been with us, this will be the sixth year now, which is a bit of a favourite, to be honest. Right, is everyone happy? Right, then, good girl. Hopefully we can get it sorted and give her a pain-free life again. That's it. If we didn't do this, the only other option would be to put her to sleep. And you know what? It sounds like she's a real gentle giant, so I really hope we can save her. Given the stressful nature of their work, a Yorkshire vet needs a sense of humour to get through the day. And in Kirby Moorside, with Peter deep into a dog dental, assisted by Nurse Cara... I wonder if we should swap sides now. Yeah. He's hoping that the old ones are the best. What's the best time to do a dental? Time of the day? I don't know. 2.30? Oh, 30. no! <laughs> you shouldn't laugh at your own joke, so should you? I do. 2.30. But so. it's why you're a vet, not a comedian, Mr yeah, Wright. Well, that's it, yeah. <laughs> Over in Thursk, Sarah's brought Walter the Shih Tzu to the practice because of a mouth problem that's no laughing matter. We're at Windermere at the weekend, and Walter decides to run up a very steep grass verge. You come flying down, um, and instead of running off the grass, he ran off a little ledge, so he went face first onto the ground. All right, Walter, rest asleep. First, I thought he'd broken his front paws, and then I noticed his chin was looking swollen. So then we brought him today um, because he's not being able to eat properly and just being very painful. Julian is fearing the worst. We think it might have broken his jaw. It's unusual if he's fallen over and broken it because you normally need something like a, a kick from like a horse or something. Something's not right there. Oh. Yeah, there's something grating in there. It's horrible, isn't it? It's strange, it's, it's hard to sometimes... Oh, look, that's it there, look. So it's sometimes quite difficult to tell what's happened to a jaw, but in Walter's case, it's very evident. The front third of his jaw has come well, it's loose, I can see it's moving. So there's going to be a fracture somewhere down there. I wonder whether it's both sides. Oh, I think it's both sides, poor little man. But this is the X-ray. It's down there, isn't it? It's between that tooth and that tooth. What we'll need to do is I'll need to just go in and, and wire across those two. All right, shall we take him to theatre? It's obviously unstable, but we've had a good feel. There's clearly a fracture there, so that needs to be fixed. So we're going to crack on and, and sort that out now. Poor Walter has had a run of bad luck. He's only two, and he's been through so much in the last year. Um, this is his third visit. He got a bite down below um, earlier on in the year, so we ended up at the vets for that. And then only about a month ago, he had a water infection, but a medication irritated his stomach, so he ended up with a little bleed in his, his tummy, so he has been through a lot. So, are we all set to go? Yeah. 
he's my little best mate, so it's been hard to see him not being himself because he's normally very lively jumping about, but he's got no fear, and that's, that's probably his problem. <laughs> Nurse India does have some fear. Do all right? As soon as he's awake enough, I'll be happy. <laughs> it's quite shocking, I think. So instead of going straight across, what we call a transverse fracture, they're the sort of usual ones. This is going in a diagonal way. I'm going to drill a hole through there just in front of that tooth and another hole through there, and then we're going to repair it with wire. But already Julian can see this isn't going to be simple surgery. Uh, oh, mind you, there's no lot of stability there. And that's why all fractures are bad. Coming up... He doesn't like it. He doesn't know. Peter has to operate on a big boy who has a worried little owner. It'll hurt him. It won't, darling. No, I made it so it won't hurt him. Matt applies some elbow grease. You know that? While to fix Walter's jaw, Julian needs the power tool. Help me the drill, please. So this is just like DIY, really. James Hill's dairy farm near Huddersfield. <sighs> Matt's performing challenging surgery. Tell you what, there's a lot of swelling around here to get through. Removing the infected claw that's left one of James's favourite girls in severe pain. Oh, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. It's just uh... horrible for the poor girl, isn't it? Because I'm going to be cutting this off with wire. The better cut that I make this, the better it'll heal. <sighs> This is definitely not one for when you're for squeamish, is it? No, I can stand quite a lot of things, but this is looking particularly uh, interesting today, I think. Right, I think we're in the right spot there. So I'm just getting my wire down into the middle and making sure that I'm on the bone that I want to be. So I've gone through all the fat and all that's left to go through now is a little bit of bone. Good girl. Right, bit of elbow grease. You got that other foot there, Richard. Good girl, good girl. Yep. Yeah. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Look at that. That's looking really quite well. I'm really happy how that came off. Everything's gone to plan. And to help kickstart the cow's recovery, Matt has a treatment that's short but sweet. So I'm just going to put loads of manuka honey onto this dressing here. The boiler will react really well. It'll stimulate all those healing factors and it'll get everything heading in the right direction. First a bit of blue spray. Once we've got it bandaged up, she should be well on the way to recovery. So the aim of the game here is to take away all of the dead tissue that is not healing and causing the body a whole heap of problems and just leaving healthy tissue that can heal over and make sure she can use this foot all well again. Make sure I get this on nice and tight to stop all that blood from pouring out. All wrapped up in here nicely. Injection's done, toe off. Let's see how she walks. Oh, oh feel a bit funny. There we go. Come on, lass. Good girl. Already encouraging signs there. She's come out of that crush, she's put her best foot forward, and she's gone straight to the food, so I'm pleased to say that we seem to be heading in the right direction. Plan now. She's had a really good start. She's looking comfortable. Keep up with the painkillers and the antibiotics, and hopefully we're onto the straight and narrow now. It is unbelievable just actually looking <laughs> at her now from this morning. Now she just stood there putting all the full weight on that front foot. Eating happy as happy as Larry, it's a good sight. Uh, it's so a... no, thanks a lot, Matt. No keep worries. Keep informed of how we get on. In Thursk, Julian and India are performing complex surgery on Walter. The quicker we can get it done, the better. The young Shih Tzu who suffered a nasty fall and broke his jaw. 
It's quite fiddly. It's not something we do very often. Um, and you need to do it right. We drill two holes, thread the wire through and tighten it up, and that keeps the two fractured ends together. So uh, can you help me with the drill, please? So this is just like DIY, really. Walter was really struggling to eat. Uh, he was in a lot of pain with his mouth, so this um, should hopefully make him feel a lot happier. You need to be reasonably accurate with your drilling, so you've got the wire through either side of the, the fracture. This is the hardest bit, actually, getting it all through. There we are, excellent. So that's gone through there. And then it's just twist and tighten, twist and tighten, and then you've got to get it to exactly the right tightness. Not too tight, because it'll snap. This pushes the bones into alignment um, and keeps them there. So that's the wire there that's really nicely positioned. And when I try and go like that and manoeuvre the fracture, it's totally stable. So that's a really nice job. Then we've fastened the gun back together and all will be repaired. Poor old Walter, he, he obviously has had a fair old accident. So he's been unlucky, but there again, I think he's been quite lucky now because that jaw is practically perfect. And it'll feel as good as new. There you are, little man. Well, that's gone really well. Um, Walter should be feeling a lot better now. Hello. We've got a nice, firm stabilisation there, so it looks like um, they'll do really well from here. As well as treating the animals of their more experienced customers, Room for a vet this afternoon and they've sent you. I know, it's, it's hey. the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> See, there you go. Vets also have lots of younger clients. Oh, OK. I'm not a big fan of having a Benny. No one's ever a big fan of Wormer. I won't be either. It smells horrible and it tastes minging. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say I'm playing of worms myself. <laughs> Good lad. <laughs> And near Kirby Moorside, a former racehorse called Sammy. Hi, Sam Sam. Hi. He's quite a sweet, gentle horse, even though he's quite big. Is the ultimate champion to Sarah's young son, Noah. My little boy rides him and grooms him and loves looking after him, and he's just really, really friendly. Noah, how much do you love Sammy? Uh, past all the numbers. Past all the numbers? Is that a lot? Yeah. Yeah. But while Sammy might be used to winning by a nose, that's become an area of concern for Noah and Sarah. So Peter has cantered over. He's having problems with his nose. He's got a lump, I believe, which is quite painful and he doesn't like it messing about with. So I'm coming to have a look at that today and uh, see what can be done. Sarah. Hi, how are you? You're busy today, I can tell you. Are you busy mucking out today? Yeah, you've been feeding up, haven't you, Noah? Yeah. Noah? Right. And we've come to see a horse of yours, haven't we? Yeah. What's he got on his nose, Noah? The scar. Yeah. Has it been there a long time? Uh, yes, yeah, since he was a foal. He right. got caught in a fence as a foal. Let's have a look, anyway. Yeah. Funny about yeah, it, isn't he? Don't he's sensitive. Like it touch. You can touch him anywhere else, but he's he's a bit. Yeah, he doesn't like that. No. Well, it's a little nodular mass, basically, but it's in a, a bit of a difficult place, and certainly it could catch that very easily. And the bridle will be a problem, yeah, won't it, in does. that position? Yeah, yeah. His, his nose bands, we've got to be very careful when we're doing them up because he's very aware. Yeah. He, at some point, he must have had a. It caught. Yeah, he doesn't like it. He doesn't know, but you can touch him anywhere else and he's, he's not bo bothered. Yeah. It's... All right, big fella. Let's get you sorted out. 
So I'm going to give him a sedative, um, and then he won't worry about anything. And then we'll take it off. Yeah. That's the plan, Sally. We'll just pop this into you. That's a good lad, aren't you? Hey? You are placid, aren't you? Hey? You're feeling a bit woozy now, aren't you? Hey? All right, let's get some local in there. What we're doing now, we're just numbing it round to make sure that it's, uh, it doesn't worry about anything. I think that's, uh, there's possibly quite a bit of nerve innovation to that. Right. And that's why it's so sensitive. Right, so we definitely are doing the, the oh, best yeah. thing to have oh, it removed. Without doubt. It's a lot bigger than I thought, to be honest. If it's innervated as well with nerves, yeah. then it, uh, yeah. it will be a problem. That's what we're going to stitch him up with, Noah. Thank you. I know, but it'll hurt him. It won't, darling. No, I made it so it won't hurt him. It won't, darling. But how have you made it like that? Because I put something in, I put an injection in so that it, it numbs it so he can't feel it. And that's why his head's very droopy. Ah. Be brave, Sammy. Coming up. So we're poorly pig. A pig called Crunchy doesn't have that Friday feeling. He's drinking excessive amount of water. That's quite oh. an unusual thing to see in a pig. Noah puts Peter through his paces. I can still see that up bit. Yeah, and it's not good enough yet, is it? No. And when Matt and Shona go back to college. Oh, oh it's touch screen. Sorry, technical is not what I do. Will they also face a tough crowd? When you think vet, what do you think of? Silence. At the practice in Thursk, Sarah's back for Walter, who she brought to Julian all the way from Hartlepool, when a nasty accident left the young Shih Tzu with a broken jaw. It's been worrying, and it knocked me a little bit sick um, when it did happen. But I'm just glad they found out what's wrong and hopefully he'll heal well. But I just can't wait to get him home. He is my little sidekick and he's always, you know, he's always with me. So can't wait to see him. Hello, John's come to. Oh, oh, we're coming oh, to see you. Hello. We're coming out and you're... Oh, look at you. Oh, brilliant. So underneath is the lip that's covered up, there's some wire, and that should fix it. And he should fairly instantly feel more, much more comfortable and they'll be able to eat. It won't be so painful. Oh, great, thanks very so, much. So, yeah, no, he's been a good he, patient, really. He is a good dog. He's not had a lucky, lucky year, and I'm hoping that's it now. Thank you. Right, yeah. Right, let's go home, then. Go home and have something like lots, jelly and ice cream lots, for lots tea. Of thanks right. very much. OK, see thanks you, Walter. <laughs> Come on, then. Thanks very All much. Right. Thank you. Fractures like this heal really quite well, and the wire will do the all important job of keeping the fracture stable. And uh, yeah, should go from strength to strength. Who's a good boy? Hey. And a month later, back home in the northeast. Come on then. Walter is all smiles. Oh, it's great having him back to his old self. He's so playful, he's such a good company. Um, it's as if he's a little human, to be honest. I have no children myself, so he is my little boy. Um, he absolutely means the world to me. He's been an absolute godsend when I got him. He gets me out and about, keeps me active and keeps me sane, really. He means the world to me. He's had a, a rough couple of months, um, so hopefully that's it now. Happy little boy. Kirby Moorside at Sarah's stables, Peter's removing a painful lump from Sammy, the former racehorse's nose. Be careful. I'll be careful. Under the very watchful eye of Sammy's young owner, Noah. What do you reckon, Noah? Uh, Is it up to your standard? Well, uh, blood doesn't look good. No, no you're right. We can, we can mop blood up, can't we, darling? Yeah. I've got the mass off now. There's minimal bleeding there. So we're just going to put some stitches in there now. And uh, I think our taskmaster down here wants it as neat as possible. I want to make sure that it's right and up to your standard. Because if it's not, I'll be very unhappy. 
if I can't if I can't do a good job for you. But I can still see that up bit. Yeah, and it's not good enough yet, is it? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they say, don't you? There's two things you never see, a dying donkey and a satisfied Yorkshire farmer. <laughs> I'm very happy with how this has gone. It's come off very nicely, very neatly. Mm. It's just solid, yeah. solid tissue. It's like very, it is fibrous, yeah. but it has a structure to it. That's not scar tissue. No. Yeah, what do you think, then? I think it's a little benign mass of some sort. Yeah. Around here, that looks fab. Do you know what I've got that I think we should put on under that? An absorbent dressing. Well, you're the vet. I never argue with a nurse. Never. So it's like an absorbent? Yes, Just because yes. it's, like, still leaking it, a bit? It will do. Yes, it will. Yeah. yeah. Well, Noah, job's done. Yeah. Are you happy with it? A little bit. A little bit, eh? Right, fair enough. Well, I can't, I, I've done my best. No, I think that's really, really yeah. good. Really pleased with that. Thank you very much, you're Peter. Welcome. No, you're welcome. Yeah. Fingers crossed it heals and... Fingers crossed he doesn't rub it. Yeah. Down to him now, isn't it, to be a good boy? Your boss is a hard task, master. Yeah, thank nice you. Nice to see you. Yeah, yeah all thank the best. You. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. My only concern now is if he starts to rub the wound as it starts to heal, then uh, that could open it up. But uh, that couldn't have gone any better, really. The wound itself is clean. That's come together very well. But Noah is a very hard taskmaster. He's one of these chaps that, whatever I do, it wouldn't quite have been good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Nice big wave, Noah. <laughs> <Goodbye>. <laughs> In Huddersfield, Matt and Shona are hoping their veterinary expertise will impress some slightly older youngsters. I've been invited to a local college today to speak on the careers day about uh, being a uh, vet in Yorkshire to get them inspired and hopefully they can prepare nicely for university applications, hopefully it'll help them with their interviews and such and really I just want them to enjoy it. I actually came to this college, it must be quite a few years ago now. It's really nostalgic coming back. Obviously, I had quite a few friends here, and uh, it's nice looking back on the memories of being a, a late teenager again. <laughs> My name is Matt Smith, and I am a vet. I've now been vet for eight years. <laughs> We're going to do a bit of a talk on what it means to be a vet, what you need to do, and I've got some really grim pictures to show them, which should hopefully get them thinking. When you think vet, what do you think of? Stunned silence. It's not the best of starts. So that there is what... Oh, oh it's touch screen. <laughs> Hold on, sorry. I'm not... I'm technical is not what I do. But once the vet roleplay begins... Hello! I've just come to get Cecil's ashes. <laughs> they have a captive audience. This is Alan the Chihuahua. So you've brought Alan in for some emergency desk work today. Is there an infection there? Not at the moment. This is why we're going into the surgery. How's, uh, how's Fluffy's results? Unfortunately, there is no cure. We can't remove the lump. Unfortunately, no, it might be a little too risky. Very good, here's Alan. Well, that was no. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going to get lectured, but it was actually quite fun. It was nice to get some of like the more gritty details, all of the gory bits. There is a skewer straight through to the other side. The impaled dog was a bit of a... Um... <laughs> anyway, the dog is happy and living, which is great. He wasn't taken aback by anything. He was like, oh, this, this is what happened. It was gory. There was blood, there was muscle, bits of fat. I could see the bone. I was like, this is nasty. It was very engaging. I just jumped over a fence and sprayed my ankle. So I'm actually hobbling after this, like, cow. He had, like, a certain pizzazz of going about it. I was like, come on, live, live. You would expect it to be kind of like a dark subject, but he emphasised wow. the highlights of it and, like, how saving an animal can be so rewarding. You can help out and do something that really, really matters. It's great working with them, seeing the enthusiasm there and telling them a bit about our job. What part of that animal 
is the picture of and giving them useful information to help get them into university. So showing the coming here kind of showed us that we can do it if we try and that there is a route into it. Yeah, and like it was, it's like she inspired us, it was inspirational to see that somebody coming from here was able to go into that field and like it's like walking her footsteps almost. All right, well done, team yeah, one. Well done. Yeah. They were really good answers. Yeah, yeah. These kind of helped cement it for me that it's what I want to do. You've all done very well. I hope you've kind of given you an idea just to break down a bit of fear of talking in front of people, thinking on the spot. So, yeah, well done. Well nice done. Yeah. Um, well, it's a really nice day outside and uh, the pubs are open. <laughs> <laughs> tend to be a little more varied than in other parts of the country. Like at George and Heidi Aycliffe's near Harrogate. Hello, piggies. Hello. We have four pet pigs. They're really very friendly. As you can see, they just love being stroked. And you can see he's just grunting away, happy. But one of these cooney cooney pigs, eight-year-old Crunchy. Hello, Crunchy. He's a big boy suddenly seems anything but happy. Can we see your face? Hmm? Hey, Crunchy. Yeah, you talk to me. You told me off for waking you up, eh? It's just resting more than normal. And we've noticed just before the weekend that it was losing a bit of weight as well. We are very, very concerned. We've called Julian and he's on his way. He should be here very, very soon. Hello. Hello, Julian. Hello. So we're poorly pig. Bad poorly, poorly pig, yeah. Pigs asleep in the stable. In the stable, in yeah. Is that one going out? Yeah. That's that might be a good thing, uh, maybe. A bit shy. Good pig. Have they got names, these pigs? Yes. This, this is um, Crunchy. This litter <laughs> was named after chocolate bars. You can see Crunchy's quite thin there, isn't she? Yes. And eating anything, or...? Eating grass, yes. not eating the concentrate. But he's drinking an excessive amount of water. It's interesting, that. That's quite an unusual thing to see in a pig. We see it, obviously, in dogs and cats with things like diabetes. It can reflect internal organ problems, so uh, liver or kidney problems. No, the temperature's not really... It's not a high temperature. No. Interesting. It's always difficult to see their eyes with the fur. Looking at the membrane colour, it's uh, one of the important things that we like to check in any poorly animal. So things like septicemia or that kind of problem, toxemia, you tend to get very red membranes in the eyes, and that's quite, quite injected there, which could well indicate some form of toxemia. Not being sick? No, not seen it being sick. And no coughing? Yes, I noticed it coughing just before you came. Yeah, the heart sounds good and the lungs sound really clear. <coughs> I think that the most likely thing is <clears throat> a kidney infection. Right. So it's called pyelonephritis. Um, it's one of the conditions that pigs can get, and bacteria go either up to the kidneys or from the bloodstream into the kidneys, and it can damage the normal kidney function and cause drinking a lot. Right. Um, and it can also make pigs feel quite poorly, not wanting to eat. It's a bit difficult to do lots of tests in pigs, but I think that's probably worth a go to treat right. for that. Antibiotics, I'll go and get a jab and then we'll do that. Right, that's it done. <laughs> there we are, it's off. Pigs, when they're, they're feeling poorly, they, they do look on, totally on death's door. Yeah, he's gone back in. Looks like he's ready for sleep again, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah. Well, let's hope that makes a difference. Just keep us updated with how, yeah. how we're getting on. Will do, will do. Really appreciate your time, thank you. <clears throat> There's some more doses of drug to administer. I don't think current position looks very promising, but it's definitely worth, worth a go, I think. I feel a lot happier now that Julian's seen Crunchy, so uh, hopefully we see a lot of big improvement in the next few days. Still to come, 
This'll do. <laughs> well done, Tim. And how's our patient? The weather's glorious, but what's Matt's forecast for James's star cow? We'll go. Let's have a look, shall we? And after Peter's surgery, is former racehorse Sammy odds on to make a full recovery? Does it seem comfortable? Yeah. Because I know when we took the mass off, it was quite sensitive, wasn't yes. it? You've had no problems with it? Matt is back at James's dairy farm. Two months after removing one of his favourite cow's badly infected claw. You all right, James? Morning, Matt. How are you getting on? This'll do. <laughs> well, won't it? And how's our patient? We've got her, got her in the main shed now. Well, should we get a quarter bit crushed and I'll meet you around there and check her out? Brilliant, yep, no problem. Lovely. Cheers, Matt. Go on, then, Petal. Good girl. Go on, love you, all right. Go on, love. Come on, then. Lovely. Good girl. Let's have a look, shall we? That's incredible how well that's healed, isn't it? No signs of infection, no signs of any swelling. She's walked in the crush absolutely fine. You know what? I couldn't be happy with that. That is brilliant. Good girl. Procedures like this are always the last resort because it's not always a good outcome like it has been today. Come on then, lovey. Seeing how well she's healed up and how well she's walking around is really nice because when it does come to the crunch, it just shows that always worth giving a go. I couldn't ask for a lot more, to be honest. She's still got a bit of a limp, but it's never stopped. Her. She's yeah. done really well. Yeah. Obviously, she's going to have a little bit of altered movement, but yeah. there's no swellings there. She's clearly not in pain, and the condition's fantastic. Hi, she's <laughs> no worse for wear, is she? Just goes to show, doesn't it, how hard these animals are. They will survive anything. You always have your favourites in the shed. What I used to call her the gentle giant. It was a bit upsetting to see that she was in pain and she wasn't just a, a normal self, so... It's lovely to see that she's back on her A-form again and, <laughs> yeah, happy days. Recently, Julian met George's very poorly Cooney Cooney pig, Crunchy. You can see Crunchy's quite thin there, isn't she? Yes. And eating anything or...? Eating grass, not eating the concentrate. But he's drinking excessive amount of water. We are very, very concerned. I think that the most likely thing is a kidney infection. I think that's probably worth a go to treat right. for that. Yeah. Mm. And on a fine Friday afternoon, he's hoping Crunchy might just have cause to thank him. Good girl. Morning. Good morning, Julian. How are you? All right. Very good, thank you. Hello. A lovely little dog, Cracky. The only dog which welcomes a vet in. <laughs> <laughs> Do we go and see? Yeah. We were expecting the worst. She's over there. Oh, wow. Munching away. Yep. Excellent. Oh, there we are. That's a happy pig, if ever I saw one. There we are. Hi, Crunchy. I mean, totally, totally mended. Totally mended, yes. So, how rapid was the recovery? After the first injection, there was a recovery, but not yeah. much. He was still staying inside. Yeah. It took a good three weeks before we felt he was getting his strength back. Crunchy looks like a totally different pig. The last time I saw him, he was very, very poorly. We didn't really think he was going to... Uh, survive actually. Uh, the prognosis looked quite quite poor, but with the injections and with time, he's totally transformed into a happy and hungry character. So it's worked out really well and, and better than I think we were expecting. They're great creatures, aren't they? Because oh, they're lovely. People think that you know pigs are maybe a bit sort of you know dirty and not very nice to deal with, but they're so friendly and they're so interesting. Well, look how they are with the dog. They're interesting, the characters, they're clever. But there should be more pigs around like this, in my view. Well, 
when I was younger, most houses had a, particularly in the country, had a pig sty, didn't they? In the yeah, the and they'd eat potato peelings and yeah. leftover bits. Brits of, yeah. Bits of uh, vegetables. Yeah. They're just as good as a dog. I know someone who's actually got a pet pig that lives in the house. I've heard that. This, yeah. I've heard that. Well, they don't mess inside. No, no. They won't. Excellent. Right. Try not to... Well, don't Imagine use Imagine if the whole of Yorkshire was like this. Wouldn't it be good? Yes, it would. <laughs> <laughs> that went quite well. Punchy's like a totally new pig. It's nice to see him looking so happy and so well and so hungry. And, uh, yeah, so it's been a nice outcome. Across Yorkshire, Peter's hoping that some of his recent work was just as successful. If not, he knows he'll be in bother with a young horse lover. Jimmy! I've come to see a horse called Sammy. The last time I was here, I had to take a lump off his face. Shush. And no, pretty much get me in order and let me know what the quality of the workmanship was like. So I'm just calling today to see how things are and to make sure that Sammy's lump removal has gone OK. Oh, Sarah. Hello. How are you? All right, thank you. Are you? I'm very well. Well, that's healed up nicely. Since it's been removed, he's... Yeah, super. Good. Happy Excellent. with his bridle and happy with brushing and stroking. He's not worried at all about it, so we're really pleased. Sammy is a former racehorse, and the plan is for him to become an inventor. Well, you think he's got a bit of potential? Yes, I do, yes. Very good. Does he handle well? Can you hold the reins and control yeah, him? Yeah, I can, yeah. Can you? And can you ride as well as your mother, would you say? Well, he just goes steady with me on. Does he? Yeah. I'd be flabbergasted if you couldn't ride him. Can you show me, do you think? With high hopes for Sammy as an event horse, and Noah confident he can do the riding... You gonna come and hop on? Right, Sammy. Whoa! Peter making him pain-free has been crucial. That's healed, uh, healed nicely. I'm quite happy with that. Is it, does it seem comfortable? Yeah. Because I know when we took the mask off, it was quite sensitive, yes. wasn't it? Yeah. And uh, you've had no, no right. problems with it? No, no, what? it's been fab, and he's really happy to put his bridle on now, which Excellent. is yeah. the, the bonus. He's just got it a itchy head at the moment. So now the training can begin. What can Shemmy? And Noah can make Peter eat his words. Look straight ahead, nice and tall, tall back. Wow. It's lovely to have Peter to come back and see him and see that the little procedure that we did, how life-changing it's been to Sammy and how he's a lot more comfortable with his bridle. Wow, that's fantastic. Look at the expression on Sammy's face. He knows he has to be very gentle. Lovely. Walk on, Shem. Is it nice up there? He looks yeah, after you, doesn't it? I think we have a budding jockey here. <laughs> You've proved me wrong, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Who knows in future? We might say no in a competition, eh? Oh, we might do. <laughs> <laughs> and the Yorkshire Vet continues next Tuesday at 8. Susan Kalman's heading back out in her camper van, Helen, for a whole new series of Jolly Japes. Join her for a grand day out to Cornwall Friday at 8. And as the case moves from missing to murder, where will the finger of suspicion point now? The house across the street continues brand new next. <laughs>